Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works, and I want to welcome you to another hopefully exciting session of 10 Minutes with a Tech. This is a part of our channel where folks will watch one of our YouTube channels. They might have some questions involving RV tech type stuff, and it's an opportunity for them to ask a real live RV technician a question related to their RV repair. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to this so when we put out a new video or something, you get notifications if you click that bell. Um, if this is helpful to you and you feel it can help somebody else, by all means, share it with others. So without any further ado, let's jump right into some of the questions that some of our viewers have asked. So the next question is coming to us from Brian. Now he and his family were camping in Yellowstone and um, the heater ran out of propane. From what I understand from his comments, that was a separate issue, but when he was starting it back up again, he noticed that his water heater and his fantastic fan were not working. I'm not sure what the connection is between the furnace running out of propane and the water heater not working. So let's just take the water heater issue, okay? Now he's had an electrician verify that the fuses that feed the water heater are working at the fuse panel, but he's still not getting it. So to do this, we're gonna follow the trail. Your water heater, you say you have an Atwood water heater, okay? So your water heater is going to have a switch on the inside and that feeds to the water heater. Your water heater is dead in the water, no electricity, no power, no pun intended. It gets its power from the switch, okay? Now, we're gonna take two paths. I don't know if you have a just a LP only water heater or one that does LP and AC, okay? But it doesn't matter which, let's just follow both trails. You should have 12 volts sitting on one side of your switch on the wall switch inside of your RV. So you take that out, verify you have 12 volts there. The trick is finding a good ground to reference. So a lot of times I'll look around where the switch is and I'll find a wall receptacle and I'll take the black lead of my meter, put my meter on 12 volts DC, but I'll take the black lead of my meter and put it on the ground plug of the wall receptacle because I know that's a good ground. And then I'll take my red lead on 12 volts DC and I'll touch it to the, the switch. There's gonna be a common wire feeding one half of both switches if you have the LP and the AC. So you need to see 12 volts there, okay? If you have 12 volts at the switch, great, but if you don't, the problem is between the fuse panel and that switch. You must have 12 volts sitting on the switch. So when you flip the switch, you send the 12 volts down. Now when you flip the switch, we're gonna follow the trail. So there's your first um, homework assignment. Prove you have 12 volts sitting over half of that switch. Okay, that'll tell you if the problem is downstream towards the water heater or upstream towards the fuse panel. But that's a good place to start. So let's say you have 12 volts at your switch. If you have 12 volts at the switch, when you flip the switch, verify the switch is right. You should have it now 12 volts on the other half of that switch for LP, 12 volts on the other half of that switch for AC. Great, wonderful. Now, let's say you do. If, if you don't, then it's the switch. If you do, we're gonna follow the trail to the next spot. The next spot's gonna be at the water heater. On your Atwood water heaters, when you go to the outside of your water heater and flip that cover down or lift the cover off in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see your control board there. Now, um, Brian, you said you replaced it with the di dinosaur board. That would be your UIB64 board. It's gonna have a metal, metal plate. Your board goes on there with those four screws and then you have a little clear cover. I like the dinosaur board, they have diagnostic lights on them. So that would be the replacement for your Atwood. I did a video on replacing a um, the water heater board with the UIB64 dinosaur board. On your Atwood water heater, I did another video where I talked about all the wiring, okay? So if you're flipping it on LP, you should get 12 volts on the orange wire. If you're flipping it on AC, you get 12 volts on the white wire, okay? so. On the DSI board on the outside of your Atwood, you're gonna take your meter. Usually on the uh, exhaust the cover is where your ground, you could use that as a ground. So again, you're gonna use your meter, black lead, put it in 12 volts DC, touch your black lead to the metal uh, exhaust. And then a lot of times I'll take my meter and I'll put like a little pointy prong thing on it and I'll stab it inside of where the orange wire is up on the top. So you might have two connectors. This would be if you have, um, AC and LP. If you just have DC, LP, um, then your connector gets a little bit simpler. 
but your orange wire is going to be the one where you see 12 volts coming in to that water heater. If you have 12 volts coming in on your water heater at that point, and it's... So, let me, let me just tell you where we are on the trail, and I'm going to repeat myself. Verify you have it at the switch. Verify you have it through the switch. Verify it's going all the way down to the water heater. Verify that you have it on orange wire for LP and white wire for AC. Okay? If you have it at that point, again, I, I'm going to reference another video where I go through the details of what those wires mean. But on your Atwood water heater, you should have a thermal fuse and I cannot tell you how many times I've done service calls and the little $18 or like $5 little thermal fuse has failed. So look for that, but also go watch my videos. You can look at our video playlist for water heaters and I've done a lot of videos on following the trail for the water heater. So um, now you mentioned your fantastic fan. Again, verify you have 12 volts at that fan. A lot of those fans also have fuses on them. Make sure that the fuse on the fan is good. Okay, so I'm gonna stop with that. That's your trail, so Brian, hopefully that helps you. And if it does, leave a comment and let us know if that helped you out. Okay, thanks for watching. Well, for our next question, we've got one coming in from Greg, who's in Ventura, California. Now, Greg has a 2006 Newmar Essex, and he's got a Hydra Hot system in it, which is Aqua Hot. Okay, and his question has to do with his zone heaters. And from what I gather on his question, these are going to be those, those cozy heaters that are within the coach down around floor level okay and basically none of those are working from what I understand uh, so Greg you didn't tell you told me you had a hydra hot but you didn't tell me the model number now some of those older ones they have ice cube relays for your zones and some of them you have that uh, green co control board with the little black cover uh, the screws on the corner are 830 second screws if you lose one don't ask me why I know that so it, I'm gonna assume that you have the 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 black control board you know, with the green motherboard behind it, okay? If you do, then you have like a J1, a J2, a J3, and a J4. These are where all these green connectors connect to it. What you're gonna need to do is go to that upper J1 connector. It's a big, long connector. It's got all these wires coming in on it. Now, you're gonna need a multimeter, but if you look very carefully at that board and you look at the little white um, silk screen printout, it's gonna say or thermostat one, plus and minus, I think, or, fan plus and minus, it's going to have something. It's going to make sense when you see that upper left hand jumper wire, all J1, JP1 is what it's called. When you're calling for a zone heat, that's going to be coming in on that connector. So you should be getting a signal. You mentioned you have an Eplex. You should be getting a 12 volt signal coming into that for like zone one. It's going to say like, I think zone one, zone two, zone three. I don't, I don't happen to have one with me. But you need to see 12 volts coming in at that point, and then you need to see 12 volts going out at that point. Now, if you want to try to trick it, you can find the wires that go out to those fans on that JP1 jack, and you can put 12 volts on it right there and see if that sends signal into your different zones, okay? But all your troubleshooting is going to be done on that upper JP1 plug. You should see 12 volts coming in, and you should see 12 volts going out. If you see 12 volts coming in but nothing going out, you may have a bad control board. Um, if you have 12 volts coming in, 12 volts going out, sometimes different manufacturers do this different ways. They may have a thermostat on the cozy heater itself. So I am aqua hot. I'm sending a 12 volt signal out to those heaters. And then there's a thermostat kind of strapped onto that um, boiler antifreeze pipe right there at that fan. And I have seen where sometimes those go bad. The reason they would put that on there is because when you first start up your aqua hot and you're asking for heat, you're gonna be running some cold fluid through just to get it flushed through everything. And you don't want your heater inside your coach to be putting cold air in, right? So those little thermostats right there at the cozy heater, I have seen where those go bad too. But to troubleshoot that, you need to verify that you have 12 volts coming in and 12 volts going out on that upper green connector. So I hope that helps and let us know in the comments. All right, thanks for your question, Greg. Well, folks, that's all the time I have for today to answer some of your questions, but feel free to leave comments below if you have questions specific to your RV repair. Um, if this was valuable to you, give us a thumb up, like, like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with some friends. So until our next session, this is Darren with My RV Works signing off. See you on the next video.